In this chapter, we will be studying trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to use trigonometry to find the missing sides of a triangle. Okay, hi everybody. So, we're going back to trigonometry, and we're going to carry on from where we left off before. We were taking a look at uh, SOHCAHTOA, the, the primary trig ratios, and we would looked at how uh, we can use what we would learned to find, first of all, the ratio corresponding to an angle, and then to find the angle uh, corresponding to a given ratio. Okay, and we used our calculator for that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use our basic trigonometry, what we know about basic trigonometry here, to find the missing side, whether it's the opposite side to an angle, the adjacent side to an angle, or the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, in this particular case here, in any trig ratio, remember there's going to be a numerator and a denominator. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to approach this problem as if we are looking for that numerator. Whatever the ratio turns out to be, as if we're looking for the numerator here. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we identify that reference angle. Okay. Got to identify the reference angle, and then that helps us label the sides. Okay. Opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Then what we're going to do is we're going to choose uh, the ratio that corresponds with the information that we have and the information that we're looking for, okay? Because usually when we have an angle and we've got a side, there's another side that we're looking for. And so what we're going to take a look at is we're going to look at the angle that we're given. We're going to take a look at the opposite adjacent hypotenuse, and we're going to look at the one that we're given, the one that we want, and that's going to tell us which of those ratios there are the functions we're going to use. Now, once we've got that, typically, we're going to use multiplication to finish the problem. Okay? Because it'll be, it's sort of like cross multiplication. Uh, usually when you do cross multiplication, there's this cross multiply and divide part of it. Uh, but in this particular case, because of what we're looking for, you're going to see that we don't actually have to do the division part. And I'll, I'll show you with a, an example or two here. And then we'll, we'll carry on here. So to start off with, we're going to find the missing side. We're going to find that uh, side x there. But before we do that, notice that we've been given an angle. There's my reference angle. Now what that allows me to do is recognize that this side over here is the opposite. But I don't have anything. So like, there's, there's really no point in addressing that. But that is the opposite side. Now, I am looking for the adjacent side. So in this particular triangle here, it's the adjacent side that I'm interested in finding. And notice I've been given the hypotenuse, the side that is opposite the 90 degree. Okay, so now I gotta think. I gotta think about my SOHCAHTOA. I have adjacent and hypo hypotenuse. So remember, these are broken up into groups of three. And adjacent and hypotenuse, that's gonna be my cosine, my ka here. So the cosine, of 39 degrees is going to equal the adjacent side, which in this case I don't know, it's x. And that's the whole point. I'm looking for the, the side that shows up in the numerator here. But I do know the hypotenuse, it's 4. Okay. Now, one thing that I could do here is I can take the left-hand side and write it as a fraction over 1. You can do that with any number. Okay, just draw a line underneath and divide it by 1. Because any time you divide something by 1, it just gives you that, that number, that value, that function, uh, whatever it is you're working with. Now when I do this, I can cross multiply and divide here. Now what's beautiful about this is notice when I multiply this way, 1 times x is just x. So love that. And then over here I get 4 times the cosine of 39. And I, I would uh, advise you to, when you multiply a cosine or a sine or a tangent by a number, put that number out front so that you don't confuse it and accidentally multiply by the angle there. What I want to do is I want to multiply 4 by the cosine of that angle. So I bring my calculator over here. I'm going to uh, plug in 4 multiplied by the cosine of that angle, 39. Okay, and then I'm going to press Enter. And I get 3.1 as my solution. So this is going to be approximately 3.1 units, whatever the units happen to be in this particular case. And that's all there is to it. Okay? You, it, 
essentially boils down to me multiplying this number in the denominator by that trig function. Now, let's take a look at just a couple more examples where we're doing basically the same thing. Okay, so now in this question right here, once again, I'm asking you to find x, but it's the angle that I start with. Okay, that angle, that 73, helps me identify that the side that I'm looking for is the opposite side in this triangle. And again, I've been given the hypotenuse, the side that's opposite the 90 degrees. Okay, my little arrow doesn't look right there. So there we go. So I have opposite and I have hypotenuse. And so I got to just think, Sokatoa, which trig function are they asking me to use here or hinting that I use? And the answer is sine, opposite and hypotenuse. So the sine of 73 degrees, because remember, the trig functions always act on an angle. There's always got to be trig function with an angle is going to be the opposite side, I don't know what that is, that's my x, over my hypotenuse 13. Well, once again, I'm going to write that as sine of 73 over 1. Cross multiply, so 1 times x is x. And then I'm going to write this as 13 multiplied by the sine of 73 degrees. Okay, then this becomes calculator work, so 13 multiplied by the sine of 73 degrees. Okay, and I get an answer of approximately 12.4. Okay, and there you go. We'll try one more. In triangle ABC, angle B is the 90 degrees. Okay, whoops, I was going to write 90 there. I mean uh, B. Boy, I mean B. Angle C is 22 degrees. Let's put C right here, 22. And here's A. Little a is 15. Okay, little a is 15. Now that means, I remember, that's going to be on the opposite side of the triangle. So I need to be familiar with this kind of labeling in order for a question like this to even make sense. So I'm looking for, sorry, I have little a here. I know that's down here. This is going to be equal to 15 inches. And I'm looking for little c, and little c is going to be the opposite side to angle C. So that's, that's going to be over here. And I am looking for little c. Okay, well, the 22 degrees, that's the reference angle. It's never going to be the 90 degrees. The 90 degrees is what makes this a triangle that I can do trig with. But I get the reference angle uh, from the angle that I'm either given or I'm looking for. So there's my reference angle. So that makes little a here my adjacent. And little c over there is my opposite. So what trig function puts together opposite and adjacent? And the answer is tangent. So it's going to be the tangent of that 22 degrees is going to equal the opposite side, which in this case is little c, over the adjacent side, which I know is 15. Once again, I'm going to write that trig function as if it's over 1. And so 1 times c is just going to be c, and then it'll be 15 times the tangent of 22 degrees. So 15 multiplied by the tangent of 22 degrees. And I get that it's approximately, let's say, 6.1, and I think the, the units in this case were inches. So 6.1 inches. And there we go. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at what happens if it's the bottom number in that ratio that we're interested in. What if it's the denominator that's the thing that, that uh, I want? Now, what this is going to do is it's, it's simply going to add uh, one additional step to the work that we were just doing. So it is a little bit more complicated, but really not, not much. So here are the steps here. First of all, once again, we're going to define that uh, reference angle, okay? We're going to use that to label the sides, the opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse, okay, that whole bit there. We're going to, once again, we're going to pick a ratio here, but this is where we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to switch and divide to solve, okay? Not multiply, we're going to switch and divide. And just to show you what we mean by this, uh, so here's an example down here, but let me give you one that's a little bit different, and then I'll come back to this one. So watch this. 
Notice that 3 is equal to 6 divided by 2. Okay, that's, that's true. But because that's true, that means that I can come over here and I can go, well, that means that 2 is equal to 6 divided by 3. And so notice that I can switch those two and it remains an equality. Okay? I haven't lost anything there. I haven't started to say something that's, that's untrue. And that's because 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, basically I'm just swapping out the factors and, and the quotient there. So up here, if I know that the tangent of 23 degrees is supposed to be 15 over x, even if I don't know what x is, because I've stated that this is an equality, I know that I can therefore switch those two. And that if this is true, then it must mean that x is equal to 15 over the tangent of 23. Okay, that, that that has got to be true as well because this is true. And that's the, the little algebra tool that we're going to use moving forward here. So now let's take a look at some examples. So this question right here, notice that we've got this 60 degrees up here. That becomes our reference angle. That's what's, that's what's important here. So that means this over here is my opposite. This one right next to it that's being used to make the 60 degrees. This is my adjacent. And it's my, whoops, I don't know why I wrote that down there. I was thinking, thinking hypotenuse. The unknown here is my hypotenuse. Now, I don't care about the opposite. I don't ask you for the opposite. What I've given you is the adjacent. What I want is the hypotenuse. So now, what trig function puts together opposite, sorry, adjacent, my mistake, adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, it's got to be cosine. So the cosine of 60 degrees is going to equal the adjacent side, 12.9, over the hypotenuse, x. And so here we are in a situation where the unknown is in the denominator. But I just showed you that what that means here is I am allowed to swap those two. Okay? And that, that equality will still be true here. So I can write that x is equal to 12.9 over the cosine of 60 degrees. Now, if you've got stuff added and subtracted uh, in and around these things, well, then it doesn't work that way. But if you've just got value is equal to this, this ratio here, yes, you can. And so now in my calculator, I will just plug in 12.9 divided by the cosine of 60. And we get that our answer is a nice 25.8. Uh, and there's no units there, so just 25.8. Good. Let's take a look at another one. So in this particular example, again, we're focused on the angle that they've given us. So this is the reference angle here. This is my opposite side. This is my adjacent side. And notice that I'm not giving you the hypotenuse. I'm not asking you for the hypotenuse, so I don't care. Okay, so now, so cut, whoops, I was going to say so koa, but it's toa. What trig function there puts together opposite and adjacent? Well, it's tangent. So the tangent of 53 degrees is going to equal the length of the opposite side, 3, over the adjacent side, x. That's the unknown. I want to get x by itself. It's in the denominator, so I'm going to swap those two. So x is going to equal 3 divided by the tangent of 53 degrees. And then this just becomes calculator work. 3 divided by the tangent of 53 degrees. OK, and I'm getting 2.3 when I round that to the nearest tenth. So this is approximately, whoops, approximately 2.3. And again, I, I haven't been given the units here, so that's fine. Let's just do one more. So in this last one here, again, there's an, the angle that's been given to me. That's what's important. There's my reference angle. So this right here is the opposite side. Uh, I'm looking for the side that's opposite the 90 degrees. So I'm looking for the hypotenuse. And I 
I haven't given you any information about this adjacent side. I'm not asking you for the adjacent side, so I don't care. I only really care about the opposite and the hypotenuse. And so, again, what trig function, what trig function combines the opposite and the hypotenuse? Okay, that's the sine. So the sine of 35 degrees is going to equal the opposite side, 9, divided by the adjacent side, which is x. And again, I notice, oh, look at that. The thing that I'm looking for is in the denominator. That's OK. I can swap those two. So x is equal to 9 divided by the sine of 35 degrees. That becomes calculator work. 9 divided by the sine of 35 degrees. And I get 15.7. Approximately, because I had to round it, 15.7 units. OK? And so that's how we're going to use the basic trig ratios to find the sides. Now, it'll vary opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. But in terms of the actual structure of the question, there really are only those two questions, where you're looking for the numerator or you're looking for the denominator. OK, hope that helps.